I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. In this video I want to talk about rim shots and I want to talk about it because it's been probably the bane of a large part of my uh, drumming career and to some degree my teaching career as well. So I want to talk about things like setup and some of the things that we may be doing to jeopardize our ability to play a rim shot. So what is a rim shot? A rim shot is a sound that you will have heard on lots and lots and lots of recordings, whether it's a Buddy Rich big band record or a Beatles record or any kind of contemporary rock, funk, whatever. And what it is, it's the sound of the stick striking the rim and the center of the drum at the same time. This is what it should sound like. And here's another one. So when I was about 20 years old, uh, a, a friend of mine taught me um, a groove that was based on an inward paradiddle. And what this friend of mine taught me um, was to play the accent on the snare drum as a rim shot. The inward paradiddle pattern that he showed me was this. One, two, three, four. Well, that day was the beginning of my struggles. And when I say struggles, I actually really struggled to play a consistent rim shot. Um, it was a sound that I recognized and all of my favorite drummers at the time were getting this snare drum sound. And it was the snare drum sound that was basically coming from playing a rim shot as the backbeat. So I had trouble getting this consistent. So I would practice it as much as I possibly could. And then when I was about 22, 23 years old, I started to get a lot of uh, sessions. And whenever I played a, a backbeat as a rim shot on the tracks that I was recording, I noticed how inconsistent they were. Um, so much so that in some instances, the recording engineers had to replace those missing rim shots with the ones that I actually did hit. Bear in mind this was before Pro Tools, so that process was a little bit more involved um, having to take samples of some of my snare drum hits and replace it. So as my journey continued, I went to a lot of drum clinics, as many drum clinics as I could, whereby the drummer was a traditional grip player because I'm primarily a traditional grip player. And I would always ask those clinicians, and I'm talking about world famous drummers here, I'm not mentioning any names, but these are world famous drummers. And I would ask them about, uh, you know, how did you manage to get your rim shots so consistent? And usually the answer I got was, I ah, just keep doing it, it'll, it'll happen. Well, it didn't happen and I got really frustrated. So. I started to give this more thought and in the last few years I've come up with this uh, approach to playing rim shots or at least to begin playing rim shots um, just to add a bit of consistency to the sound. So it all starts with this quote and I want you to remember this because this is seriously important if you want to improve this. Every sound that we make on our instrument is the end result of a series of movements that occurred before it. So what does this mean? That means that every sound that we produce has a series of movements that happen before it and so I believe that the quality of those movements are going to have quite a fair bit of influence on the quality of the sound that you produce. If your movements are consistent, your sounds will be consistent. If your movements are inconsistent, then you're going to struggle to get a consistent sound. So I started to pay a little bit more attention to the movements that I was making. What I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit about that. This is really key as far as making sure that you can play consistently 
and paying attention to the movements that you make and trusting that those movements are going to uh, result in a good sound. Before that, I need to talk to you about a few things that we can do to um, ensure that we've put ourselves in a good position to play a consistent rim shot. Now, again, I'm talking from the perspective of someone that plays traditional grip. Playing rim shots as a traditional grip drummer can have some challenges if you don't go about it the right way. In fact, I know a lot of drummers who, as youngsters, perhaps in their teens, um, play traditional grip and then as they sort of moved into a professional or sort of more of a rock kind of genre, they uh, ditched the traditional grip for, for match grip and usually it was because they found that they could get more consistent rim shots that way. Something to think about. So one of the first things I suggest that we think about is the setup of the snare drum. For me, as a traditional grip drummer, I need to have my snare drum angled higher on this side. So it's sort of like the drum is pointing down from an eight o'clock position to a 10 o'clock position. My eight o'clock position, do people still have clocks? An eight o'clock position angling down slightly to a 10 o'clock position. And uh, this is to accommodate the difference in angle that the left hand has over the right hand. When you play match grip, the stick is sitting underneath the hand. With trad grip, the stick is actually sitting above the hand, so it's going to uh, change the angle of those sticks. Now, if you look at photos of Buddy Rich's setup or people like Dave Weckl, Steve Smith, um, you'll notice that they have their snare drum uh, tilted on this sort of pretty traditional angle. And it's really to accommodate the rim shot and to maximize the rebound that you get from the left hand. So that's the angle. The snare drum height is also important. When I play, I don't want my forearm to be any lower than parallel to the floor. So I like to keep my forearm as parallel to the floor as I possibly can. Another thing to consider is which part of the hand you are using to play the rim shot. This muscle in your hand is actually the strongest muscle that you have in your hand and that's the thumb muscle and that's the muscle that I use to uh, push down um, when I'm playing the rim shot. So I'm actually using a flicking motion that's perpetuated by the thumb in this manner and that's really the driving energy um, behind my downstroke when I play a rim shot. Also bear in mind that when you play a rim shot, that's the lowest position that your hand is going to be in. Another important thing to consider is minimizing the amount of movement that you make, certainly forearm movement. When I talk about forearm movement, I'm really referring to minimizing the up and down movement and replacing that with a rotation of the forearm. So it's basically built on the principle of less moving parts. We're trying to minimize the amount of movement so that there are less things that can go wrong. As we increase our ability to play rim shots more consistently and we become more confident with it, then we can add more of a molar movement behind that rim shot. I'm gonna go into that in more detail in a future video, but for now, it's just a rotation of the left forearm. And again, I'm talking from the perspective of a traditional grip drummer. So here's what I mean by up and down movement, which we're trying to avoid. And what we're trying to do instead is use a forearm rotation. Another key aspect is the timing of the upstroke. And this is um, something that I've practiced a lot. I'm still working on it. I'm getting all of my students to work through this as well. I want you to think about this. If you're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, the notes that we are not hearing are the 16th notes in between. The stick is moving back on every 16th note in between those eighth notes.
So what I feel is important if you're playing a, a, a basic kind of rock groove is to make sure that your right hand and left hand are in sync. That means that your left hand should be moving upwards exactly one sixteenth note before it moves down. So here's an example without hitting anything. One E and R two, three E and R four, one E and R two, three E and R four. This will put our left hand in sync with our right hand if we're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat. Let me give you an example of that. Just hands, no bass drum. One, two, three, four. So my snare drum hand is moving up at the same speed as it's moving down. I'm not doing any sort of slow upward movement then accelerated downward movement at this stage. I'm just trying to keep everything um, contained in terms of movement and synchronized as well with the right hand. So here's the first exercise that you can practice. We're going to play a single paradiddle on the snare drum. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Each downbeat is going to get an accent and that accent is going to be our rim shot. Now I'm talking about the upstroke or the back lift of the stroke before the accent or before the rim shot. So essentially what I want to do is this, R1, E and R2, E and R1, E and R2, E and R1. So I'm really thinking carefully about how I prepare for that rim shot. One, two, one, E and a two, E and a one. I'm getting a lot of sound from that rim shot, but I'm not putting a lot of big physical effort into it. So I'm more concerned with the consistency of the sound at this stage. Another thing to help with the sound of this is making sure that the tip of the stick is as close to the middle of the snare drum as you can get it. This is going to give you your fattest sound. There are other types of rim shot sounds that you can get when you move the tip of the stick towards the edge of the drum. And I kind of reserve that sound for certain fills in certain styles of music, or in some instances, I may play that in a groove if I'm trying to alter the snare drum sound for a section of a song. Here's an example of that. So that gives you an idea of the uh, different tones that you could get with a rim shot. So for the fattest, optimum, kind of beefiest, chunkiest, grooviest sounding snare drum, I like to go for the middle of the drum. So what I want to do is show you an exercise that I practice on a daily basis to improve my rim shots. It's a two bar exercise, we're playing sixteenth notes. The first bar is a single stroke roll right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, etc. except when we hit the last two sixteenth notes. In that case, it's just going to be a double. So, right, left, 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 right, right. Because we've got those two rights at the end of that first bar, the sticking will reverse for the second bar. The second bar will be left, right, 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 left, left. Let me play the sticking for you on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four. Now when we move that to the snare drum, the leading hand is going to accent. 
So the leading hand, in this case the first bar is played with the right hand, that means we're going to accent all the right hand strokes except for the double. And then obviously we reverse that when we hit the second bar. Here's what that will sound like. One, two, three, four. Another thing I like to do is play a samba bass drum pattern underneath this just to help tie in the hands and the feet and making sure that all of those unisons are accurate. One, two, three, four. Now one key piece of advice that I'm going to uh, mention here is if you miss a few, don't give up. Don't stop and start again. If you miss a few, keep playing. I want you to play through your mistakes. I want you to play through your inaccuracies. If you miss a few and then you stop, you're not really giving your body enough of a chance to make those little micro adjustments in order to find its position where you can play these accurately. So play through your mistakes, don't stop playing, aim for consistency. Okay, so the second part of this exercise is to accent both the right hand and left hand in each bar except for the double. That will sound like this. One, two, three, Four. So the point of that exercise is that we're trying to get um, as much symmetry in sound. We're trying to make the left side and the right side sound identical. Um, what's going to happen is if your snare drum is tuned higher on one side than it is on the other side, you will notice that too. So that may actually exacerbate the unevenness between the right hand and left side. So make sure your snare drums tune pretty well too. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, it's probably a bit longer than my normal videos and if you liked it please hit the like button and please subscribe so I'm on a mission, a mission to um, get a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and if not then at least by my birthday in April and, and remember to hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted as to when I'm uploading a video which is every week. I, I, I'm uploading content every week. Have fun practicing Aim for those beautiful consistent rim shots and um, I'll see you next week. See you later. Uh, okay, where am I going with this?